Team Me fam. Welcome back to Team Me Nation. It's your girl, Tawana. And your boy, Bond. And we are back on the scene, back on the set with another video for y'all. We doing a car bang today, y'all. It is Soul Food Sunday. And we doing a collab, y'all. This is the Bama Bonanza. We reached out to some of our, some of my fellow uh, Alabama folks, folks who grew up in Alabama or who live in Alabama now. And we doing a collab, y'all, on Soul Food Sunday. So shout out to Embry Family Entertaining 7, Jeffrey's Angel, for the Bama Bonanza. If y'all have not seen their videos yet, go over there and check them out. Make sure you watch their Soul Food Sunday video. We are all channels from Alabama or channels with people from Alabama. We're going to tell some stories. We're going to eat some soul food and tell some stories about growing up in Alabama. So what we got to eat today, baby? We got some good old Mickey soul food. I have smothered turkey wings, mashed potatoes, uh, gravy, broccoli and cheese rice, red beans, and some jalapeno cornbread. Tell them what you got, hubby. I got smothered pork chops, collard greens, mac and cheese, black eyed peas, and some cornbread. Oh, and we got Kool-Aid oh, yeah. on deck, y'all. Red. Oh, wait, this ain't Kool-Aid. This ain't Kool-Aid. These we are got daiquiris. daiquiris. <laughs> <laughs> I got a mango daiquiri. He and got the strawberry. Strawberry. Talking about Kool-Aid. Mm hmm It's good. It's sweet. It tastes it's like Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. Probably, probably going to feel nothing from it, and that's good. We gonna dig in, y'all. Oh, you got the grease? Oh, let me get the hot sauce, y'all. We keep hot sauce in the car. We doing the car, man. We got the hot sauce on deck. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and put yours. Now this is Jamaican hot sauce, y'all. So don't don't have nothing to say about it. <laughs> it's my favorite hot sauce. Yeah. I'm honest, I did. Hmm? I put the potatoes in my mouth, and it's so freaking good. Ooh, I wish I had that pepper sauce. Mmm. These red beans good. Mm hmm. I'm gonna need it. I wish I brought my pepper sauce, y'all. You need to bring your pepper sauce? I ain't bring my pepper sauce. Good food we got here, y'all. Yeah, y'all. So I grew up in Alabama, born and raised. Left right after high school. Mm -hmm. Went to New Orleans for college. Never did move back, but that's where I spent my childhood. Mm. Good. I wanted some chitlins, y'all, but they ain't having them today. Mm-hmm. Good. She probably glad they didn't have no chitlins. I don't like chicken, chitlins, and I don't like how they smell. Or look, this turkey wing is so big, though. I usually get a chicken. I'm like, it's huge. It's a big ass wing. Exactly. We're gonna eat a little mm. bit mm. and then I'm gonna tell y'all some stories. So we are so hungry, we haven't eaten all day. And we always say, and it's the truth, we have not. Mm -hmm. We don't really do soul food Sunday, y'all. Mm -mm. And the embers, y'all, I swear, every time they do a mug man, it look like it's soul food Sunday. Don't matter what day of the week it is. Mm -hmm. I had soul food Sunday growing up. Okay, so most of y'all know I'm not. Obviously, I'm from Alabama, from Louisiana. Obviously. It's obvious because everybody knows that. <laughs> I'm not from Alabama. I am from Louisiana. If any of you have watched my, our videos, you've heard me talk about many things Louisiana. If you are new, then you know I'm from Louisiana. We had Soul Food Sunday. Not at my house growing up, but my grandmother, Big Mama, she had a soul food meal every single Sunday. So... The family ate there. The whole community. She she cooked enough to feed like a couple of blocks, okay? Mm -hmm. And they would come over and eat the food. So I did grow up having that. You know, probably should do that for my own kids. Yeah, we had that too, y'all. My grandma would cook something, and um, one thing she reminded me of about that is sometimes they would in invite the pastor. Hmm. Small town, y'all. Mm -hmm. We didn't go to no mega church. So, yeah, they, we knew the pastor. Mm -hmm. Pastor would come over, eat with us. Mm -hmm. Is it the same pastor y'all have now? Mm -mm. 
No, I grew up. Uh, I grew up AME, and the way the AME church works with Baptist churches. I don't know if this is Baptist all over, the, like all over the place, but like you can just open your own church. You can't do that with AME. Okay. Mm -mm. They appoint the pastor to each church. Mm, like Catholic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I think when I was growing up, two pastors in particular I remember. I might have gone, we might have gone through three while I was a kid, but I only remember two. Why did they get rid of them? I don't think they got rid of them. Sometimes they would get reassigned. But why though? I don't know. Gotta be a reason. Because they were all good. Well, the two I remember were good preachers, so it ain't like the people ran them out of town or nothing. Maybe things going on behind the scenes. I know in Catholic Church, it was always things going on behind the scenes that we didn't know about. Whenever uh, they would get, we would end up with a new priest. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody who's familiar with the AME uh, process can comment down about that. So let me tell y'all a story. I'm gonna start by saying. I grew up as part of the post-civil rights generation. So, mm -hmm. as some of you already know, I grew up in Selma, Alabama. I was also a member of the church, Brown Chapel AME Church. Um, that's the church where they had a lot of the mass meetings during the civil rights movement. That's also the church where the marches that Selma is known for started. They started at that church. So a lot of history in that church. My mom only has one sibling, my aunt. So my mom and aunt were both involved in um, the marches and the meetings and all that kind of stuff. So I was part of the post, I call it the post-civil rights generation. So we Especially being a member of the church, we participated in like recommemorating the march. We didn't march all the way to Montgomery. We only marched from the church to the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And then on the bridge, they would do some kind of ceremony, you know, just mm -hmm. talking about what happened back then and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's one thing I was involved in growing up in Alabama. Mm -hmm. These, black potatoes. Eyed peas. These black eyed peas, y'all. That's how I feel about my red bean. My red bean's good. Is it good? Let me see. Hey, I think it's good. You avoided the pork? Of course. You pork. Look, give me that pork. Where's the pork? That mm -hmm. pork. I'm going to tell you another little story, kind of related. So, y'all know, most of you probably know, in the South they had Jim Crow laws. That's one of the things they were marching and protesting and seeking to get rid of through the civil rights movement. You know, the whites only uh, bathrooms and separate bathrooms, separate um, uh, water fountains, separate schools, all that other stuff. I remember I was probably about eight years old and during the summer, we used to go down to the YMCA and swim and all that. We stayed with this, um, when I say we, I'm talking about me and my cousin. I had a cousin that grew up with me, Raymond Parker, if he's down in the, in the comments. But yeah, we would go down there, stay with this lady during the day who's a friend of my grandma's. Go to the, walk to, from her house to the YMCA. We eight years old, y'all, walking from somebody's house to the YMCA. And sometimes on the way back to her house, there was, there was a corner store we would stop at. So y'all know how we would go. Back then we would go in there with our with our little change. How many cookies can I get for a dime? And hmm. how much is how can, you know that kind of stuff? How many nine ladies can I get with a quarter? You used to do that. I don't, I remember mm. going to the store buying candy, but 
Maybe I probably did do that. Hmm. So anyway, I went in that store one time, y'all, because I had to pee. I was on my way from the Y. I just stopped in there. I ain't buy nothing. I just had to pee. Again, I'm like eight, nine years old at this point. So I go in the back looking for the bathroom. I found it, used it, came out. This white man standing there. This was the clerk or the owner or whoever he was. He worked at the store. He said, did you just use that, that bathroom? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. Probably said, yes, sir, because we were taught to say ma'am and sir and all that to, to any of those back then. But yes, sir. He was like, you don't use that bathroom. Mm -hmm. now, he, I wasn't quite sure what, like why he was upset about it in that moment. But as I was running home, it dawned on me why, what, why you know, why he was tripping. Because he didn't say that restroom was only for employees, that's not for the public. He didn't say nothing like that. He said, you don't use that that bathroom. So you were in the whites only bathroom? It wasn't, they didn't have whites only anymore. Well, not for, not technically. Right. Hmm. But obviously he didn't want the little nigga kids coming in using their bathroom. Right. So I just ran out the store, y'all, and ran to the ladies' home. Hmm. That's crazy. Hmm. So, what type of food did you eat growing up in? Alabama. Stuff like this. Smothered pork, smothered chicken, uh, fried chicken, fried pork chops, smothered steak, hamburger steak. Isn't that funny? Who's hamburger hamburger steak? hamburger steak. A hamburger steak is just a hamburger patty with some gravy on it. <laughs> Everybody else in my family used to eat liver. I did not eat that liver, y'all. So they would just give me hot dogs when they made liver. I am so full. I don't think about waiting till long to eat. You get full fast. Pig feet, pig ears. Pig ears? Pig ears. What y'all do with the pig ear? How'd y'all prepare it? It was, uh... It was, like, cooked down. Kind of like they cook oxtails. Ooh. Cooked down and... and it was in some kind of sauce. I ain't never heard of eating no pig ear. Mm -hmm. See, they eat pig lips in Louisiana, y'all. We didn't eat the lips. Y'all didn't eat the lips? Mm -hmm. Now, as far as vegetables, collard greens, um, turnip greens. I don't think I ever had mustard greens as a kid. You uh, know the difference? I know the difference if I look at it. Raw. Mm. Um, collard greens, turnip greens, green beans, green peas. Um, we didn't have a, we, at least in my household, we didn't have a big variety of vegetables. Hmm. Um, black eyed peas. Mm -mm. Y'all had black eyed peas? Mm-hmm. Cornbread. I think the only bean we ate was, was uh, black eyed peas. Y'all didn't eat red beans? Mm -mm. White beans? Hmm? White, white beans? beans. Mm-mm. I had friends who ate white beans and navy beans, navy peas, whatever they are. But we it's didn't. the white beans. The navy beans? Mm -hmm. They're white. Mm -hmm. The navy beans and the the white beans, that's just called white beans. Matter of fact, that reminds me of something else, y'all. Right in the neighborhood, the kid that ate the navy beans, one of my friends used to make fun of him for eating navy beans. And I never knew why. Yeah. You know how kids make fun of stuff, people for the fun, weirder stuff? It's like they were, he was saying only poor people eat that or some shit like that. But. Why did he think that? I have no idea. <laughs> it was weird. His mama would he call him fun. to dinner. And the other one would say, yeah, go on in there and get them navy beans. <laughs> And we would all laugh. Probably none of us knew what was supposed to be funny about that, but. Hmm. Hmm, that's crazy. You just make fun of each other. <clears throat> so crazy stuff. I do. Sometimes I don't even know why. 
Let me tell y'all one more story. Because talking about the neighborhood made me think about this. <laughs> so we kind of live outside the city limits. Not in the country per se, but just, just kind of outside the city limits. And so um, people ride horses out there and do all kind of crazy stuff. People had, you know, gardens, like big gardens. But anyway, in the back, towards the back of our neighborhood, there was this dirt road that led to another neighborhood, a white neighborhood. Our neighborhood was all black. At the back of that, there was a dirt road, red dirt road that led to a white neighborhood. And on that dirt road, this man had this huge watermelon patch. So that friend who ate the navy beans, his uncle had made him a go-kart. He made the motherfucker from scratch. Yeah. He had he had a steering wheel from a car, a motor from a tractor. It had like lawnmower wheels on it. It had a you know a, a piece of board at the bottom for him to sit on, a seat from a car. Like this dude made a go kart. He took his go kart. The rest of us were on bikes. We went back there, stole a watermelon. Ooh. We just went to the patch, grabbed the watermelon, put it on his go kart because he had plenty of room on the phone. It was a big go kart, y'all. Came back, bust that sucker open outside, and ate it. Hmm. So, boy, y'all make fun of about the navy beans, y'all use his go kart. <laughs> yes, because y'all walking. None of us had, had a go kart. -kart. <laughs> we weren't walking. We had bikes. We had bikes. And he had a whole go kart. Mm -hmm. Was y'all still making fun of the boy? Of course. <laughs> He shouldn't let y'all get on that go-kart no more. That's crazy. We're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up because we got a time limit because of these premieres. But, uh, yeah, y'all go over and check out Emory Family Entertaining 7, Jeffrey's Angel. See what kind of soul food they eat and see what kind of stories they're going to tell. Y'all do the cringy YouTube stuff. Thank you for joining us as always, and we will catch y'all on the next one. T&B Nation out. Bye.